Hi, I'm Jen, and welcome to So Much Yarn, a podcast about my adventures and often misadventures in quilting, sewing, and knitting. Thank you so much for joining me today. As this is my first and inaugural adventure, I thought I would take a few minutes and introduce myself. As I mentioned, I'm Jen. I'm married to Nate, who is a very supportive and encouraging husband, especially when I come up with harebrained ideas and schemes, like when I said, I think I'd like to start a podcast. And in true Nate fashion, he said, go for it, Jen. We have an all-new seven-year-old who is named Ella. She is a strawberry blonde firecracker who loves to be outside and loves to read. During the day, I am a music teacher. I'm a music teacher to grade to middle school, which is grades six to nine. So basically, I teach band to grades six to nine. Now I'm sure some of you have some questions and you are welcome to leave them in the comments below. The one question I always get is, well, what instrument do you play? I'm a saxophone player. It's what my degree is in, saxophone and music education. And I have been teaching for 15 years. Though in my free time, I craft as a release. So let's talk crafts, more specifically quilting. I have a few projects that are in various stages of construction, but I'm going to share a couple with you. The first one is a quilt top I just finished using the pattern Yellow Brick Road by Atkinson Design. I'll post a picture just right here so you can see what the quilt top looks like as it's too kind of big to handle and show you properly here. Now this is a fat quarter friendly pattern. It is wonderful for beginners and terrific for more advanced quilters who are looking for a palette cleanser. It's wonderful because, here is it in person here, it's wonderful because it's basically straight stitching rectangles and squares. So it's very methodical, it's very soothing, very straightforward. What's also great about Yellow Brick Road is the fact that it comes in a variety of sizes. You can make a baby sized quilt and you can go up to king sized quilts. This is a lap quilt and lap quilt sizes vary, but this is a lap quilt. So it'd be great to kind of cozy up in. Now, before we move on, um, let me talk about fat quarters. So fat quarters are a pre-cut of fabric. They range in size from about 18 to 20 inches by 20 to 22 inches, depending where you're from. You see, in Canada, where I am from, we measure our fabric in meters, whereas in the United States, they measure it in yards. So to get a fat quarter, what they've basically done is they've taken a half meter or half a yard of fabric. They have cut it on the fold, which means you have a quarter of a fabric, two quarters of a fabric, because you've taken a half a meter and cut it in half. But instead of it being a skinny quarter of a meter of fabric, which is like this, where it's a quarter of a meter by, or quarter of a yard by the width of fabric, you now have a fat quarter. This one here would be an 18 by 20 inch one because this one is from the States. So there it is there. Now fat quarters are an awesome way to start if you are a beginning quilter because a lot of companies and des uh, fabric designers will put fat quarter bundles together like this one here where they include all of the pieces of that collection. So if you get to a pattern that calls for 40, like this bundle here, 40 fabrics, you can pick up this lovely bundle and you're set to go. You don't have to match anything together. All of these fabrics go together, which is really terrific. Fat quarters are also pretty economical. You can find fat quarters for anywhere from about $2 to $5, depending where you go. And a lot of times if you go to quilt markets, you will find them, you'll find bins for them for a couple of bucks. So you can make a great quilt top for a few, for, no, without breaking the bank, basically. This quilt top here took 12, took 12 fat quarters. So that is pretty good if you average that out. Now, the next quilt that I am going to work on, and I'm actually just in the beginning processes of it, 
is a quilt called My Small World by Jen Kingwell. I'll post a picture up here. Now, the picture I'm showing you is one that I've already completed. In fact, it's up on my wall, up in my bonus room, because as I said, I have a very supportive husband who is totally okay with hanging my quilts all over the house as our pieces of art. So My Small World is hanging up in my bonus room. Now the first time I made this, I made this with my dear friend Paula at a class that my favorite quilt store um, had called, and the quilt store is called Out of Hand. So Paula and I took a class at Out of Hand for My Small World and we put it together. This is just a picture here of the her original design. We just blew it up here and this was great when we did the pattern. And you can originally the pattern was out of the Quilt Mania Special Spring 2015 magazine. That's the only place you could you could find it. More recently, it has been released as an individual pattern that you can find in a lot of quilt stores, but I've left a link below of where you can find it as well. Now, what I love, love about Jen Kingwell Designs is Jen Kingwell has a great philosophy of you can never have too many fabrics in your quilts. She believes that the right number is somewhere between 75 and 100 which is awesome. So it is really, her projects are scrappy quilts. So I have here much embarrassingly stored my bits of fabric that I am going to use for my small world. And these fabrics have been collected um, from other projects that I have made over the years. Uh, some of my most favorite quilts that I've made over the years. Some of them you can see uh, in this one behind me, which is Smitten, again, a Kingwell pattern. And again, these are some of my favorites. So I want to make a small world because truthfully, I have a spot on my wall just behind me here that is needing a piece of art, that is needing a quilt. So that is where it is going to go when it is finished and I am so excited to start cutting even if it is what feels like a million one by one squares but I'm ready for it I cannot wait I do have some sewing plans as well um however I haven't really started started anything with them I have my pattern printed and everything like that and I am going to be working on the hinterland dress by so liberated and I'll post a picture just right here. And I am going to make it out of this fabric here, which is Kaufman's Essex Yarn Dyed Linen Blend in Eggplant. Now this is not the piece that I'm using. Uh, this is another piece I have. Currently, it's in the washing machine, getting all washed up so I can start. So those are my sewing plans. Let's talk knitting now. Now, on me right now, I am wearing my Shift Cowl by Andrea Mallory. I knit this in Cascade Wave, which is a economical choice if you were looking at it. The only difference is this is worsted weight. So we went up, I think, in the needle size for that. But you can find more information on my Ravelry page if you're interested. And we made this, uh, a group of us made these um, as a knit along at my local yarn store which is called Yarn Twister and it was part of our knit night. We made it at knit night though the first knit night we started them was a pretty quiet knit night because we had to concentrate but it is a great pattern by Andre Mowry. If I make it let's be truthful I'm making it again. When I make it again one of the things that I'm going to very much keep in mind is on this second section here I need to find yarn that has a little bit more contrast because my color two and color three go together quite a bit and there needs to be that kind of contrast. I thought I had contrast, but by the time 
there we go. By the time I got into kind of the more middle of my skein number two and the middle-ish of my skein number three, they were so close together that there isn't a, it isn't a lot of contrast. It doesn't bother me in any way, but I would like a little bit more. So that's something to keep in mind if you were planning to make it. And again, Cascade Wave Worsted Weight was a pretty great choice. I love this one. I wear it quite often, especially when I'm teaching in my virtual classroom, um, and which is in the, my basement, and, and it's a little bit cooler. So that's, that's what I've got. Now, what else do I have on my needles? Currently also with a make-along, a sweater-along with my local yarn store yarn twister, I am making the Kayla Top by Pip and Pin. It is a fingering weight crop top which I would very much like to wear over some summer dresses like my hinterland, for example. This is knit flat and then in the round, and it starts with a really great lace section here at the top. And I will say this is a great lace section. It is straightforward. It is methodical. I didn't make any mistakes, which in itself is amazing when it comes to a lace section. I don't have great, I don't have a great track record with lace. So this was terrific. So if I show you this way here, um, this the bottom half is the front, and then I'm working just on the back, and then shortly I will be joining in the round and working the decreases there, so I'm very excited. The yarn I am using is from a local dyer, uh, Vivid Yarn Studios right here. I hope that works for you. And it is in the color Tofino. It is a spectacular variegated blue with, with speckles of pink and yellow are in here. It is honestly be just beautiful and I cannot wait to finish it. I was able to get gauge so I used the recommended needle size for that. It is currently hanging out in my sweater bag. My sweater bag, I made myself. The fabric uh, is from Cotton and Steel. It's a canvas. The inside is a quilting cotton. I found this also at Out of Hand. And I just needed a project bag for my sweaters because I was finding that my sweaters were getting all kind of bunched in and messy. And I didn't like that very much. So I made a little drawstring sweater bag out of that. And that is where my my Kayla top is. The other thing that I have on my needles right now is one of my Make Nine projects, and that is Hoarfrost by Andrea Mowry. It is a worsted weight shawl. I'll just show you, sorry about the delay here. There we go. It's a worsted weight shawl. There we go. So I finished the main body. I'm working on the lace. Uh, it's a beautiful kind of leaf pattern. Um, it is one where I need to concentrate, so it's one of those ones that I I pick pick on and work on when kind of no one is around so I can concentrate because truthfully, I have made some mistakes in the lace. I, yeah, lace and me, we're not always best friends. Um, my little project keeper, in case you can see that, is from uh, Sugar Tots out of Edmonton. Yes, it's a mitten. Yes, this is not the month to wear mittens, but I just like it so much, so I, I've kept it. The yarn that I'm using is by another local dyer. They, uh, she is, they are Sassy Strings. So this is from Sassy Strings Studio in her colorway, Ruby. I have to tell you, Sassy Strings Studio are probably, she is the nicest lady she is so, so wonderful. Tracy is her name. And she is a marvelous lady. And her husband is also just a dear. And I enjoy seeing them so much at, at knitting shows and yarn shows. They are wonderful to work with. And as I said, this is her ruby. And they helped me pick the color. Um, and I am so grateful because it, tur it is turning out just beautifully. It is being held in my Fringe Supply Company bag right now. I'm just, give me a second. 
there we go, in my Fringe Supply Company bag. This I got for Christmas from Nate um, in the colorway Fig. There we go. So as I mentioned, I do a make nine. This is my make nine up here. My make nine is is a guide for me. I've made them the last couple of years. And what I like about them is the fact that it kind of gives me an anchor, an idea of what I want to work on throughout the year. Do I stick to the list? No, no, I don't. There are other times throughout the year where things catch my eye and I want to make those. And I give myself the freedom to do that. But when I'm looking for a project, I go to my make nine because these things are things that I love. I know I want to make, but it helps me focus in on them. It also helps me focus in on them because I have yarn for them already. And often what I'll end up doing is I'll take my make nine to Nate. And I'll say, okay, Nate, I'm finished on this project. What do I work on next? And we'll walk through it kind of together. He's more analytical than I am. Well, you just did a hat. So maybe you want to make the matching, make some mittens to go with it. Or, oh, it's pre getting pretty warm out. Maybe you want something a little bit more lighter. What's more light on this list? Or sometimes he'll just randomly pick. I like that one. Try it. So if you don't have a make nine, it might be something that you might want to consider. It's your nine kind of favorites. So there it is. Now, I think that does it for today. Below... If you're interested in finding my Make 9 or finding out about some other projects, I've linked below the places that you can find me if you are interested, as well as linked any of the uh, any of the wonderful designers and items that I've talked about in today's adventure. Before signing off, I want to thank you so much for spending some time with me today. And I look forward to our next adventure together, and I hope you find joy in the journey. See you soon.